Hello and welcome to Bad Mic Videos. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple VTOL mechanism using this pendulum-like design and also demonstrating its ability on a larger scale ship. Now, to start off with, we're going to need a wall to work with. This wall can be of any size. It has to have... it should be relatively large though. First is a power source, in this case a battery specifics don't really matter. Most important is just any amount of power starting off. Then, afterwards, you're going to want to get out a hinge, place it so that it sweeps across your bit, across your wall, and then place a second hinge on top of it. This way, any blocks placed on here are a sub-subgrid of the wall itself. Next, you can place any sort of um, conveyor mechanism or even just regular armor blocks if you're not planning to use conveyors. Um, preferably though, not a junction, as that could interfere with the later steps, but if that is necessary, you can simply place a light armor block here so it's for later on. Then you can add something like a thruster to it. This will be for demonstrative pur purpose, eh, purposes later on. Uh, I'm just going to move it out a bit. And But the most important step is that you add a merge block that faces the wall that you're working with. Now, to get started, you're going to want to move your hinge up like this so that it's out of the way. Now, as you can see here, between the hinge and your merge block is one block. So, if we go from the hinge to the side, one block, we can place a merge block on the wall itself, and also place one a block further down. Now, simply put, you now move your hinge back, give it a lower limit of, in this case, zero degrees, because it will otherwise overshoot your merge block most likely. And now you'll see it flashes yellow, but this is simply a sort of calibration-like issue. Uh, and you will now want to move your block back, your hinge, facing forward. Now, as you can see, the merge block has lit up green, meaning it has successfully connected this subgrid back to the main grid, which is typically not how that's supposed to work but since this is space engineers it is bugged and does. And now if you look at the thruster I can move it with the W key and if I go in and disable the merge block and move the hinge back down I need to re-enable the merge block it has now merged again with the main grid and if I press space the thruster fires now this means I can now have a thruster face both forward and upward with a simple 90 degree rotation. In theory, you could also have it rotate 180 degrees upward, but this would make it more troublesome to connect with this one, and not really prove worth much. Now, this is going to be a demonstration on this work-in-progress ship that I've built mainly for the sake of utilizing these hinges. As you can see, Besides the merge block and this conveyor pipe, none of the blocks are connected to the hull of your ship, and that's going to be very important. Now, I have set it up so that if I press 1 and 3, it switches the connectors that are enabled on the ship itself, and with a press of the 2 button, I can make the hinges rotate. Now, when using the system, you might encounter a few bugs, such as the hinges simply not moving. This is not uncommon, because in this case I'm using very large grids and the game has trouble processing this, but generally it should still be able to rotate eventually. And now if I press space, the thrusters fire without any issue. I can I have now rotated them 90 degrees, connected them back up to the main grid, and they work just fine. 
if I press 1 and 3 again and press 2, they should rotate back even the un not the them not having the same speed is also normal, you just need to be patient with the system. It is a bit buggy because it is a bug in the end. Now if I press W, you can see that the thrusters fire and move forward, and if I press space, the other thrusters that were previously on the front are now firing downwards. Similarly, if I press 4, 6, and 5, hopefully at least, eventually, the rear should move as well. However, this is, as these grids are much larger than the ones in the front, this tends to result in a bit more processing being needed before they start properly moving. As you can see, I've divided the hinges into groups and named the merge blocks with groups accordingly. This is going to be very useful because for any set of engines you use, you're going to have at least six merge blocks. He here the front alone has six and then the rear again has six, so it is important to name your blocks for better organization later on. I'm afraid the hinges are refusing to move, but you've already seen a demonstration on the first side, and this is simply a demonstration of what can happen if they don't feel like working. So keep in mind, smaller subgrids work better than larger ones, and generally the whole process is a little bit finicky. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed.